Let us begin with a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God, our Father, we praise and glorify you. We thank you for allowing us to be here today as we come to meditate on the divine mercy, your love, your mercy, and uh, your plan to save us. We ask you, Lord, to, to open our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, Enlighten us to do your will here on earth, and at the end grant us eternal life. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So welcome to this uh, Divine Mercy Seminar at St. Joseph's Church, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I love Lancaster very much. You remember one day I gave... Uh, I told some people that I went out of state to preach somewhere and they asked me, Father, where is your beautiful accent from? I said, from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so, um, today we have come to meditate on the divine mercy. What is divine mercy? And uh, when did the divine, divine mercy begin? So, divine mercy, it means it is God's mercy for us. God's plan for our salvation. So, according to the Marians of the Immaculate Conception, they put it that divine mercy is when God's love meets us and help us, helps us in the midst of our suffering and sin. So that's why Jesus, uh, when Jesus appeared to St. Faustina, it is recorded in the diary, number 301, Jesus told St. Faustina, said, proclaim that mercy is the greatest attribute of God. All the works of my hands are crowned with mercy. And so, Jesus comes to show, to, to reveal to us the love 
the love of the Father, who wants us, all human beings, to be saved. And every good father has to imitate the fatherhood of God, the loving father, the caring father, the merciful father. When we do something good, we are like sowing seed, a seed is, you know, seeds. When you sow seeds, the harvest, the harvest will come. Sometimes you get a great harvest. The act of kindness, the act of love, the act of mercy. This is where, as human beings, we can learn about the mercy of God. So that's why in the, in the Gospel of St. John, we are told, St. John chapter 3, verse 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. So this is God's mercy. This is God's love. Now St. Faustina meditated on this divine mercy, and she wrote that mercy is the greatest attribute of God. Everything that surrounds me speaks to me about this. Mercy is the life of souls. His compassion is inexhaustible. O oh Lord, look on us and deal with us according to, your, according to your countless mercies, according to your great mercy. Jesus chose St. Faustina. It is important we read the diary of St. Faustina. We see her encounter with Jesus, teaching her many things that we needed to know. Sometimes we may not get the, uh, the we, we don't have that gift of receiving the, uh, the, the messages, seeing Jesus, but what Jesus revealed to her, through her, is important for us because it is to help us know what happens when we pray, for example. What happens when we, we confess our sins? When we do acts of charity, what happens? So now, St. Faustina was chosen and given the assignment of mercy. And uh, here, Jesus told her in the diary number 570, 570, Jesus said, Your assignment and the duty here on earth is to beg for mercy for the whole world. No soul will be justified until it turns with confidence to my mercy. And this is why the first Sunday after Easter is to be the Feast of Mercy. On that day, priests are to tell everyone about my great, uh, my great and unfathomable mercy. I am making you the administrator of my mercy. So now, a brief history. I'm going to tell you, of course, mercy, divine mercy did not begin with St. Faustina. As we are told that divine mercy is the attribute of God, the, the, the main attribute of God. It means eh, the entire plan of God, even sending his son to save us, is because of his mercy, of God's mercy. But now we are going to see why, why divine mercy is a devotion? Because Jesus insisted. He said, even I want a day where people are going to focus on my mercy. One day. You know? So now we come to the history of how things happened. St. Faustina wrote that even the date, it was a Friday. September 13th, 
While St. Maria Faustina Kowalska was praying in her room at the convent in Vilnius, she saw a vision of an angel who was about to strike the earth because of its sinfulness. St. Fausti Faustina implored the angel to hold off for a few moments and the world would do penance, but her plea was a mere nothing. Then she heard the words of the Divine Mercy Chaplet, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. That is diary 474 to 475. That's where that prayer is found. But it was still a mystery. She did not know where did this prayer come from. And it's very powerful. When St. Faustina recited this prayer, pleading with God for the world, the angel became helpless and could not carry out the just punishment which was rightly due to sins. Now, then it came to be revealed that that prayer was composed by our Lord Jesus Christ. It was dictated by Jesus himself. So if you have been praying, saying prayers, many prayers, they are written by human beings. But this is a prayer which was written by Jesus. So he came and he revealed it to St. Faustina. And it has great meaning. It has a very deep theology, and I'm going to explain about it. So the next morning when St. Faustina entered the chapel to pray, Jesus spoke to her in these words. Every time you enter the chapel, immediately recite the prayer which I taught you yesterday. And these words are recorded in the diary of St. Faustina, number 476. On another occasion, Jesus said, Today I am sending you with my mercy to the people of the whole world. I do not want to punish aching mankind, but I desire to heal it, pressing it to my merciful heart. That is diary number 1588. Say unceasingly the chaplet that I have taught you. Whoever will recite it will receive great mercy at the hour of death. Priests will recommend it to sinners as their last hope of salvation. Now Jesus brings another perspective here. At the hour of death the chaplet will help them, those who are dying. Either those who pray the, the chaplet, or if we pray for them, the dying. Even if they were a sinner most hardened, if he were to, to recite this chaplet on, only once, he would receive grace from my infinite mercy. I desire that the whole world know my infinite mercy. I want to grant unimaginable graces to those souls who trust in my mercy. Diary number 687. We come again to the point here why Jesus introduced this as a devotion and uh, that there must be a day set aside, just dedicated for divine mercy. That is the Sunday after Easter. Although the Bible has been written, Jesus came and he died on the cross. But what pained Jesus most is that many souls were still getting lost. So that's why Jesus said, I am giving this is the final opportunity for souls to be saved. So St. Faustina wrote that, Jesus looked at me and said, Souls perish in spite 
of my bitter passion. I am giving them the last hope of salvation, that is, the feast of mercy. If they will not adore my mercy, they will perish for all eternity. Secretary of my mercy, write, tell souls about this great mercy of mine, because the awful day, the day of my justice is near. So it is an invitation. If they accept my mercy, they will be saved. So we cannot take it for granted that everyone who dies goes to heaven. This is not what we are taught. But those who seek God's mercy will have it. And when God created us, he gave us something fundamental, but it, may be tri it can be tricky. That is freedom. We have freedom to choose to accept or to reject. So that's why this invitation comes to be very important. Accept salvation. Accept God's mercy. Go for confession. If you don't accept and you don't go for confession, if you don't confess your sins, then they remain. Then, remaining with sins, there are consequences of that. That's why even Jesus, after coming from the, uh, after his resurrection, before he went back to the Father, when he appeared to the, his, his uh, uh, apostles, he breathed on them. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. Those whose sins you, you forgive are forgiven them. But those whose sins you retain are retained. So fortunate are we to access the sacrament of reconciliation. And no human being will go to heaven with the sins. So it means if sins are confessed here, then the absolution is obtained, then people live this earthly life clean. Then, if they don't, then there is purgatory. I don't know any other way. If anybody has another alternative, let me know. But this is what I was taught, and this is what I know comes from Jesus. So now, Jesus put St. Faustina like in a kind of school, training on behalf of us all to learn this, you know? So during the retreat, Jesus told St. Faustina that the, 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 the homily, the preaching, the priest was giving was about her. What a priest was saying was about you. It was for you, purposely for you. So it was like Jesus speaking through a priest to St. Faustina, and Jesus speaking through a priest for everyone. So it is diary 998. St. Faustina wrote that today I took part in one day retreat, in a one day retreat, when I was at the last conference, the priest was speaking of how much the world needs God's mercy, and that this seems to be a special time when people have great need of prayer and God's mercy. Then I heard a voice in my soul. This was Jesus now telling her, these words are for you. Do all you possibly can for this work of my mercy. I, de I desire that my mercy be worshipped. And I am giving mankind the last hope of salvation. That is recourse to my mercy. My heart rejoices in this feast, the feast of mercy. Then St. Faustina went on, went on writing that after these words, I understood that nothing can dispense me from the obligation which the Lord demands from me. Again, it is diary number 998. 
So, the Divine Mercy Chaplet is a very powerful prayer. A very powerful prayer from Jesus Christ, the Son of God himself. So now, Saint, uh, Jesus started demonstrating to St. Faustina how powerful this prayer is. There was a heavy storm. And Jesus told her to say the chaplet. Uh, uh, pray the chaplet I taught you. And the storm will cease. So this is uh, written in the diary of St. Faustina, number 1731, 1731. The event of the storm. This is to show that Jesus can calm storms, even natural disasters. If we knew, even in natural disasters, and we went on our knees and we prayed, then we would see powerful things happening. So now Jesus demonstrated, gave her this kind of training to understand so that also we can be able to understand and do the same. So St. Faustina recounts an experience of how the prayer of the chaplet of divine mercy is powerful amidst great storms. She wrote, Today I was awakened by a great storm. The wind was, rig was raging, and it was raining in torrents, thunderbolts striking again and again. I began to pray that the storm would, no would do no harm. When I heard the words, Say the chaplet I have taught you, and the storm will cease. I began immediately to say the chaplet, and hadn't even finished it when the storm suddenly ceased. And I heard the words, Through the chaplet you will obtain everything. If what you ask for is compatible with my will. Again, this is diary number 1731. So now, the chaplet, Jesus also showed her how the chaplet can stop the angel of destruction. If there is a spirit of destruction, of course, those powers, we don't see them. But they, they recognize the power of God. Say the chaplet and you will see what happens. So there are certain things we see, there are things we don't see. When spirits are complaining, angels are complaining, we don't see. Even the evil ones that come to destroy us, when they fail because of our powerful prayers, we don't see that. But things happen, good things happen as we pray. So now, in another occasion, St. Faustina reported as follows. Once when a great storm was approaching, I started to pray the chaplet. I heard the voice of an angel suddenly. I cannot approach with the storm. Because the grey from its mouth rejects me and the storm. The angel was complaining to God. I soon learned how much devastation that, that that storm would have brought. But knew, I knew that the prayer was pleasing to God and how powerful the chaplet is. This is written in the diary of St. Faustina, number 1791. So the angel was coming to strike, and it was probably going to cause a lot of disaster. But because of praying, 
The holy soul praying, St. Faustina. She had the voice, the, the angel complaining, I cannot. There is great power that comes through that prayer. I cannot approach. So that's why in every circumstance, pray. Even though the storms in, this vi in, the, in these visions appeared to be physical, the chaplet also protects us from spiritual storms. We are in a great spiritual battle, and we must hold the fast to God and the faith in order to persevere. So, now we are given great lessons here. All, everything that Jesus revealed to St. Faustina is for us. So take every lesson St. Faustina received and attribute it to yourself. I should attribute it to myself. Jesus was not only talking to St. Faustina and revealing to St. Faustina. He was doing, he did that on our behalf so that we know the power, we know the strength, we know the protection. If we see evil things happening, calamities happening, and if we knew that we should go on our knees and pray, all these things would cease at once. So now, divine mercy for the sick and dying. I happened to encounter a miraculous, a miraculous healing. For those who have seen my work of music, you know, and uh, in my Divine Mercy CD, there is a testimony of one lady called Nancy Besset from Bennington, New Hampshire, who was healed many, many years ago by the Divine Mercy Chaplet, praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet. So the story goes like this. When I arrived in the United States of America, it was, I celebrated the Easter in Africa, and of course I was already assigned to, to come to work in the core region of Pennsylvania, Shenandoah, Pennsylvania. So after Easter, I boarded the plane. So the, the first Sunday after Easter, I was already in the country, so I was in a place called Shenandoah, as I said, and the neighboring town, there was a Monsignor, uh, the, the town was called the Manoy City. The Monsignor had a, remember that was the first Divine Mass Sunday, year 2000, when uh, John, uh, Pope John Paul II, our late uh, Pope, now Saint, Saint John Paul II, canonized Saint Faustina, and uh, he made that, the, the Sunday after Easter be Divine Mercy Sunday. So, this Monsignor was ahead of time. More than any other places, he invited the priests, myself included, to go for the Divine Mercy chaplet and devotion that afternoon, three o'clock. So, so they, they recited the Divine Mercy chaplet. I looked at all oh, this. It was my first time to encounter, you know, all these prayers and the Divine Mercy Chaplet and so on. I said, but I'm a trained musician. I can do something. So from there, I decided to write the music. And I wanted to, to write and uh, publish it and even get uh, the, the certificate from the Library of Congress, which I did. This was there. Uh, Divine Mercy Chaplet in Song. So, but now, I didn't know how I was going to get musicians, people to help me. So in 2007, I went to Maine for a retreat. There were like 350 people, something like that, at a certain monastery. And there was a, a gentleman who was playing the music. So as I was talking with him at the break and so on, I said, I, I want to record the music for Divine Mercy, you know. He said, oh, Father, I'm a devotee of Divine Mercy. I have friends. We are going to help you free of charge. 
Wow. I was so surprised, you know. But now, of, okay, I came back to Pennsylvania. And uh, I agreed to, you know, I took, late I took a, a week off to go to record. So reaching his house, because the studio was in his house, the gentleman is called Alan Besset, a wonderful man. And there's a relative of St. Andre Besset, you know. So I arrived at his house, and his wife was dying of cancer. This was 2007. Hospice nurses were just there waiting for her hour of death. So for the whole week, I did not do, I was not able to do anything but pray. But one of those days, she whispered to me, she said, Father, I hope God gives me some strength to record this music so that it remains in my memory. I looked at a dying person. We were waiting like me, any, any hour, not weeks, not days. She was dying. So I went to the pastor and they told him the situation. He said, Father, he was going somewhere for another apostolate. He allowed me to anoint her. I anointed her. So she started slowly saying the chaplet. The music I was going to record. Then I saw a dying person. She was given five months, at, at most five months, to live in a 2004. Now 2024, 20 years ago. <coughs> when I arrived at their home, she was really almost just the last hour. So she said, Father, I wish God gives me strength, some strength to record. And uh, so that it remains uh, in, for God's, you know, for, of, of, for, to honor the divine mercy and also that her friends and relatives will remember her. So... I could not say this is not possible, but I remembered in my heart, you know, I am a priest. My work is to pray with people. Let God do his work. So what happened was that, of course, it was, it was not easy. It was toward the end of 2007. Then 2008, I continued going there. We recorded and we finished the album of Divine Mercy. And you are going to hear her voice. A person who was dying. Now she's singing. You will hear the leading female voice. That is her, her voice. And in fact, even two days ago, I called them. Alan and, Dance, and Nancy, how are you? They said, we are fine. You know, I told them, we are going to have a seminar here. And I'm going to share the story, this story with you. So now, let me put... The, the music, the female voice you hear leading, that is the lady who was dying, but now she's alive. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, that is to show how merciful God is, how Jesus loves us, and Jesus heals us. And uh, the testimony of Nancy Besset, her testimony has touched very many people, has helped many people to come to the faith. Even the medical team that worked, you know, uh, were working on her, uh, you know, when she was uh, almost dying. Some of them were converted because seeing this, they said this is a miracle. And some were not even Catholics. But seeing what goes on in their families, sick people and so on, so some decided to say the chaplet. And guess what? Jesus did miracles also for them. And some of them have turned to be Catholics. So she goes to churches and giving testimonies. When I was a pastor in Eastern Pennsylvania, they came, she, they came to my church and they spoke. I could see many people in tears. How many people have we lost because of cancer? You know? But you see, now this is to show God's love. God loves us. And we have to respond to this love and accept it. Love should not be rejected. Love should be accepted. Some of you are mothers, are aunts, and uh, fathers, and uh, you know, parents, and uh, you have loved ones. Try to imagine someone you love very much, and you, you have sacrificed a lot for that person, and rejects you. It is so painful. So this is also what happens to the heart of Jesus. When we come to him, we are like kind of consoling his heart. We are making him happy. When we respond to his invitation, but try to imagine those who reject his, his invitation, who reject his love. So that's why we continue praying. We, we need to continue praying. Even for those who have no idea. Some have no idea of God's love. Of Jesus' love, some have no idea of the mercy of God. That the good Lord may touch them. Because they are his people, he loves them. So thank you for coming uh, to this seminar. Let us continue praying and uh, persevering in the faith. Jesus loves you and so do I. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God our Father, we praise and glorify you. We thank you for allowing us to be here, to meditate on your mercy, we ask you to enlighten us, show us the way to do your will, guide us, protect us, and uh, give us strength to persevere till the end. And at the end, grant us eternal life. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, welcome once again, welcome to this second session of the Divine Mercy Seminar. Um, I said earlier how our Lord Jesus Christ gave St. Faustina a kind of like training. Just Faustina repre represents all of us. So, although we may not experience everything she experienced, but we have to believe because the Lord revealed all these things for our salvation, so that we trust in his mercy, we trust in his love. God and souls, this, this was the motto of St. Faustina, God, serving God and the salvation of souls, meaning salvation of mankind, of all of us to attain salvation. Our Lord Jesus Christ asked her to pray and offer the chaplet for sinners and the dying, saying, Pray as much as you can for the dying by your entreaties, that is, Insistent prayers, obtain for them trust in my mercy. Because they have most need of trust and have it the least. Be assured that the grace of eternal salvation for certain souls in their final moment depends on your prayer. You know the whole abyss of my mercy. So draw up, draw, so draw up it for yourself and especially for poor sinners. So what Jesus told Saint Faustina is also telling us. Meaning that if we pray, God will answer our prayers. And even in the Bible, we see the examples. For example, Saul, who was going to Damascus to persecute the Christians. The Christians prayed. And how did God answer their prayers? He appeared to Saul and said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul said, who are you, Lord? He said, I'm, I'm Jesus. You are persecuting me. So go to the city, then I will show you what to do. And the one who was Saul, then came to be known as Paul, St. Paul. 
So any person can be converted. God who created us, he is able to transform us. So the, 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 the mercy of God is to, to be known by everyone. To, be, to know that great love. Even Jesus dying on the cross to show us that salvation is very, very important. And those who will get it, they will get it forever. And try to imagine those who will miss it forever. And that's why uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, the angelic doctor, put it nicely, he said, eh? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, paid the debt he did not owe. Because we owed the debt, we could not pay. Jesus paid the debt he did not owe because we owed the debt we could not pay. So God sent his son to come and do this for us. And he's inviting us to come to him for this great mercy and for eternal salvation. So now, St. Faustina was given the gift of knowing the dying who needed prayers. Sometimes Jesus told her. Sometimes her guardian angel told her. So these things, we may not hear our guardian angel, we may not hear from Jesus directly, but we have to know what Jesus, what was revealed to St. Faustina is also revealed to us. We have to believe in the and, and, and take it seriously. St. Faustina was often given the grace to know when a certain dying person desired or needed prayer. She would be alerted to the moment by her guardian angel or by our Lord himself. At those times she would pray until no longer until she no longer felt the need to pray, or until she had a sense of peace upon her, or she learned that a person had died. And all sometimes the souls, she could hear a soul saying, thank you, I am there. It means I am there, I am there. <laughs> Do you know the, the latest saint in heaven? The latest saint in heaven. This is according to me. <laughs> I just found the latest saint in heaven. And according to Father Deo, according to me, the latest saint in heaven is Saint Justin. Because he's Justin. <laughs> Justin. So try to imagine you are praying for the soul, a dying, and then uh, you hear the voice, thank you. I am there, finally. I'm waiting for you. And also they are, they are praying for you when they arrive there. So that's wonderful. She wrote, O dying souls, are in such great need of prayer. O Jesus, inspire souls to pray often for the dying. That is diary number 1015. Then Jesus gave the promise here, the promise of peace at the hour of death. For those who will say the chaplet, they will receive peace at the hour of death. And for those who pray for the, for the dying, you pray for someone dying and you are assured that this person will be granted peace at the hour of death. So Jesus said, My daughter, encourage souls to say the chaplet which I have given to you. It pleases me to grant everything they ask of me by saying the chaplet. At the hour of their death, I defend as my own glory every soul that will say this chaplet.
or when others say it, for a dying person, the indulgence is the same. That is diary number 811. So, either pray the chaplet yourself, or pray the chaplet for somebody else. The indulgence is the, indulgence is the same. The graces are the same. So, that is the opportunity to pray for the dying. We don't pray for them to die, but if it is God's plan that God has decided to take them, then he has mercy on them. What if a person prays from a distance? It doesn't matter. There is no geographical boundary. You can pray even for someone in another city, another state, even another country. And this happened to her several times, even praying for relatives, other people, even people she did not know. As I said, Jesus told her sometimes pray for a dying person somewhere. And she was given the vision to see what happened, you know, all the guardian angel and so on. And uh, the, this is recounted on, uh, in the diary number 835. You can go and read it. She also wrote how Jesus asked her to pray for a dying man, saying, My daughter, help me to save a certain dying sinner. Say the chaplet that I have taught you for him. And St. Faustina wrote that when I began to say the chaplet, I saw the man dying in the midst of, of terrible torment and struggle. His guardian angel was defending him, but he was, as it were, powerless against the, the enormity of the soul's misery. A multitude of devils was waiting for the soul. But while I was saying the chaplet, I saw Jesus just as he is depicted in the image. The rays which issued from Jesus' heart enveloped the sick man, and the powers of darkness fled in panic. The sick man peacefully breathed his last. When I came to myself, I, under, I understood how very important the chaplet was for the dying. It appeases the anger of God. Diary number 1565. So now, these words are also particularly relevant also for Eucharistic adorers. When we come for adoration, let us keep in mind our relatives and friends, living and the deceased, even the dying. Because here in the, in the diary we see Jesus demonstrating how powerful the chaplet is. Because it is a prayer, not of human beings, it is a prayer of Jesus Christ. Addressed to the Father. I offer you, eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood. I'm going to talk about it because it leads us to the Eucharist. Now, when we come, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, Jesus on the cross, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, Father, have mercy on us. When when we say that, Father, for the sake of your son's passion, God forgives. God grants prayers. That's how powerful the prayer is. And that's why it is powerful, because that was the great sacrifice on the cross. So the mysteries come together. They are all tied together. And also, they are... Um, so many graces we receive. So in everything, if you have a good plan, 
if you for yourself for somebody sick or good things or maybe uh, you are driving everything just bring the lord drive with the lord and let him take control of everything you will see miracles and miracles now divine mercy chaplet and the eucharist the the the, the, the divine mercy mystery i mean uh, devotion leads us to the understanding of the sacraments so we begin with the divine mercy chaplet and the eucharist how are they linked together look at the prayer which jesus taught saint faustina eternal father eternal father means god god the father Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood. Whose body and blood? That is of Jesus Christ. And when we talk of the body and blood, we Roman Catholics, what do we mean? It is the Eucharist. So there are words that are said, but there are words that are not said, but are implied. So immediately, the theology, the teaching of the Eucharist comes. So when you analyze this chaplet prayer, it is the teaching on the Eucharist. It helps us to understand the Eucharist. Let us go word by word. The body and blood, that is of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the Eucharist. Soul and divinity. In the Eucharist, Jesus is present, body and blood, soul and divinity, present to be worshipped. You know? Therefore, the Eucharist is the act of God's mercy. So, the Eucharist is the act of the sacrifice on Calvary. It is the sacrifice. It is not simply a meal. It is not simply a fellowship. It is Jesus Christ present. It is a sacrifice. And we are so fortunate to participate in the Eucharist. And that's why in the entire world there is no celebration, there is no liturgy which surpasses the Eucharist. Because it was Jesus himself who offered himself to the eternal Father on the cross. So now, you see now, the mysteries come together. Then, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us, Father. For the sake of your son's sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. If the whole world, all oh, Roman Catholics, everyone, if everyone pray, prayed the, the, the chaplet, and the other prayers, the rosary, and so on, this world would be better than it is now. You know? So if we begin this, as a, even in families, in groups, we will see transformation of things. You know? So that's why now it links us also. There is a Eucharistic theology there, the prayer that you expired Jesus. But the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, and fathom of divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. That is diary number 1319. You expired Jesus on the cross, but blood and water came out. So in the diary of St. Faustina, Jesus taught her how, what the significance of this blood and water for baptism, for washing the souls and so on, you know. So now this prayer brings us also to the scriptures because we are told that when they came to Jesus, he was already dead. So they did not break his legs. That is John 19, 33. Instead, the soldiers pierced his side. That is John 
to assure that he was dead, yeah, they pierced his, his, side, his side to assure that he was dead. In doing this, it is reported that blood and water came out. That is John 19, 34. So when we are doing the novena, in these prayers of divine mercy, we are focusing on the mystery of the Eucharist. We are focusing on the Calvary, what happened, you know? So you see how they are linked together. So you see now how it becomes very painful for people who leave the, Eucharist, who leave the Eucharist, leave the sacrament of reconciliation and go elsewhere because of whatever reason. I've never had anyone who says, I left the Catholic faith because Jesus offended me. I left the Catholic faith because I, don't, I no longer like the Eucharist. I left the Catholic faith because I no longer believe in confession. But you leave, game over. The enemy wins. You see now. But Jesus wants to, br to bring us back. So now, all blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. That is diary number 84. Divine Mercy uh, uh, Chaplet, the Divine Mercy Devotion, links us also to the reconciliation, to the sacrament of reconciliation, of confession of sins. That's why... One of the last words on the cross before Jesus expired, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. That is Luke 23, 34. You know? So, so eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. You see now, it leads us to the theology, to the teaching of the sacrament of reconciliation, confession, because it is through confession that our sins are removed. And it is confessing to those who are ordained. Jesus did not tell us, Confess in public, no. Jesus did not say, go in the woods all where I confess your sins, no. The sacrament of reconciliation, Jesus was very clear. Receive the Holy Spirit. Those whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. Those whose sins you retain are retained. So do you see how fortunate we are, Roman Catholics, for having this sacrament? So, so the atonement for sins, it means we can pray for the atonement of people's sins, other people's sins. Then we invoke the sorrowful passion, the most painful, excruciating pain, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Whose passion? Jesus on the cross. Have mercy on me. Uh, have mercy on us and then the, on the whole world. Have you ever been, eh? there are some people who fear injection, you know? Even pricked by something, even a needle or something. Do you know how painful it is? Can you imagine putting the, you know, the big nails on the hand, this hand and this hand, brutally and so on and the, you think it is easy? So that, this is where we, what we need to appreciate. So for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the, on, the, on the whole world. That is diary number 475. Now, divine mercy, which comes to be the forgiveness of God, the mercy of God, is also linked to the ministry of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The mother of Jesus cannot be left out. You see, look at this picture here. Of course, somebody tried to imagine. 
This is the, the picture. Of course, I pulled it from one of the webs websites, you know, just to show you. I'm not publishing it. So, so now, this shows the angel called the angel of Portugal. So the Blessed Mother appeared to the three children, Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta, in 1917. And he taught them about the rosary, taught them very good things to keep the faith. But a year before, the angel came and uh, he revealed something to pray for sinners. So, and uh, in my music, I, I put it, one of the tracks, you know, about because the, 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 the mercy of God that devotion is linked, we can link it to what happened, that event. So, for me, I quoted from the Saint, uh, uh, Sister Lucia, the book, Sister Lucia's own words, you know? Sister Lucia's own words. In 1916, an angel appeared to the three shepherd children of Fatima, Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta, and said to them, Do not be afraid. I am the angel of peace. Pray with me. Kneeling on the ground, the angel bowed down until his forehead touched the ground, and uh, repeated the pardon prayer with the children three times. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. Then rising, the angel said, pray thus, the hearts of Jesus and Mary are attentive to the voice of your supplications. So I wrote the, 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 the music for that song. My God, I believe, I adore. I hope and I love you. I beg pardon for those who do not believe. Do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. This is from Fatima in Lucia's own words, page 78. So now we reach the conclusion of our seminar today. Thank you for coming. Then uh, you cannot exhaust divine mercy. You know? So we continue praying. Thanking God for the faith he has given us. You know, sometimes we can ask ourselves, who am I? Why me? Jesus told his disciples, you did not choose me. I chose you. So we are so fortunate to find ourselves in this position whereby we were born Catholics, we, are, we, we embraced the faith, and maybe some people were touched by the grace of God and came to uh, embrace Catholicism and embrace the faith, you know. But how many people even do not know about Christ? How many people were brought up in a way which ways that displease God? offend God, but they do not know the difference. So we come saying, thank you, Lord. And in fact, we say, Deo gracias, because that is my name in Latin, but in English is thanks be to God. Thank you. Jesus loves you, and so do I. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.